Morning, everybody. It's Erev Shabbos, Friday morning, early in the morning. This week we're going to read in the Torah Parshas Yisro. Now Parshas Yisro records the most important event in all of history. That's the giving of the Torah Mount Sinai. Now what's so important about Mount Sinai? So Moses went up and got the Ten Commandments and he brought them down to the people. That's not what the Bible tells us. That's how the movies present it. But read what the Bible actually says. All the people heard, all the people saw. It wasn't just Moses by himself. It was the whole nation. Maimonides says, and the Kuzri echoes the same sentiment at, at quite at length uh, in matters of probably the most convincing religious apologetic polemic in history of how the event at Sinai was so utterly unique that it couldn't have been made up. There's no way to make up a story like that. And uh, I would recommend reading books by Rabbi Victor Miller, Zecher Tzadik Levrocha, also um, Leib Kellerman, who well, lives in Yerushalayim, uh, Lawrence Kellerman, he wrote two books, Permission to Believe and Permission to Receive. And... Uh, these books provide a strong logical argument to the truth of the Torah that makes it logical to believe first permission to believe is to make it logical to believe that God is real and permission to receive is to make it logical to believe that the Torah is the true word of God and You know, I, I enjoy very much studying apologetics from all different religions, and I've never found anything so convincing and so clear as the uh, the argument of national revelation that took place at Sinai. That by itself would be sufficient. If you think about it, I often compare it like this, if some guy is alone by himself in the woods. He says the alien came down a flying saucer with a message. You take it or leave it. That doesn't mean he's lying. It doesn't mean he's telling the truth. Even if he presents some evidence of it, it doesn't mean that necessarily what he's claiming the alien said is what he said. Maybe he did see an alien, but maybe it's not what he said. And who was this alien? What was it? Who knows? You know, was it really what it claims to be? Just because an alien comes and says something or someone claiming to be an angel or something like that, how do you know it's really real? Now, on the other hand, but even without that, you don't even know if it's even a true event. If you say it took place in the middle of the Super Bowl, millions of people watching, well, that you can't make up, at least that it happened. Now, still, the question is, how do you know it's really what it claims to be and not something else you know if someone claims it's an angel or claims it's god how do you know it's not a demon how do you know it's not an alien how do you know it's not just some special effects but at least you know it really happened so for sure we can be sure that the event at sinai really happened because you can't get away with making up a story like that no one would believe it if i would tell you that the you know if you want to say it uh, alien came in the middle of the woods so maybe yes maybe no but you want to say it came in the middle of the Super Bowl and it didn't happen uh, nothing like it happened so how do you how do you get away with making up a story no one will believe it on the other hand big events that people saw we know what happened uh, even though there's still questions about the you know the truth behind those events and certain people have their own theories about what happened with these events and, but the the fact that the event happened is true. That we can all agree. How it happened, those are different arguments. Now beyond that, how do we know that it was really God at Mount Sinai? And I would turn to Parshas Vizchan and to Deuteronomy 4, if we read it on Tisha B'Av actually, where it says, Shal no lo yom rishonim, please ask, learn history. God tells us. Other religions say, don't ask too many questions, you know, just believe with blind faith. Moses, in Deuteronomy 4, begs us, dares us, to study history, to study world religion, 
and to see for yourself that nothing like this has ever happened or even been heard of meaning no one else even tried to make up a fake story like this that the whole nation should hear the word of God speaking as you did and live uh, Leib Kellerman points out he says there's one Hindu story of a very large group of people hearing their deity speak he said he studied all the different religions and he found only one and in that case it was an army where all the people died all the people who heard that message died and it was there was no eyewitness testifying to it it was only a story that was told later and so the incredible thing about that is that we see what the Torah says how Moses says and lived because in that story another story similar story except the one detail that all the people died as opposed to our story where all the people lived even though they say their soul left them and came back doesn't mean that they died they didn't die just the soul left for a while but the people all lived afterwards they weren't they all went on and they all testified to this and and if someone wants to claim like bible critics say oh the bible wasn't written till you know a thousand years later by ezra uh, how would ezra get away with making up a story like that meaning you know people ke tell stories about all kinds of minor things don't you think a major thing like that they would have heard of he wouldn't get away with making up that story so it has to be true so in that way I feel that uh, the very really the strongest apologetic <coughs> in all world religions is this that the uniqueness of the national revelation at Sinai um, and um, now, thing is, let's say theoretically, if some proof were brought against it, that wouldn't knock down the whole religion. We don't throw out the baby with the bathwater, because we still have a lot with to stand on. Um, but with this, we can be convinced and strong and proud of our faith, not just be proud of our ancestry, our heritage, that's meaningless. Be proud of God, be proud of our faith, be proud to be servants of God in a humble way, though. Um, because essentially, it's not to put down other religions. If we look at Malachi chapter 1, verse 11, God tells the priests in the temple through Malachi, don't be so proud of your religion if you don't take care of the poor and the widow. An idolater who is honest and uh, but they go and they bring some offering on an altar they do some religious exercise they don't know any better that's what they were brought up with God says he accepts it he says great is my name among the nations of, says the Lord every place where the offerings are brought it's a pure ovulation so it's not to say that we have any superiority or any anything like that it's with humility do we accept to be servants of God but with pride and joy that we have this great message that we would like to share with the world of the revelation at Sinai and how God wants to have a relationship with the world and that God so loved the world that he gave us a standard to live by he didn't tell us I'm gonna take care of it for you like other religions claim and you don't have to do anything he said, I have a standard for you to live by because I want you to have that satisfaction. It's still essentially by the grace of God. We don't essentially earn anything. It's all by God's grace, but God gives us that power to enjoy that. <laughs> and, and, and that's a greater reward. That's what the Kabbalists explain that we enjoy the reward much greater because we earn it and so that's what the Sinai experience is all about you know we hear about is that a new um, amusement park I'm dying to go there <laughs> I really want to go to the Sinai experience I cannot <laughs> wait we hear about is that in Florida <laughs> we hear about uh, you know how Moses said 
to Pharaoh, let my people go, but we leave out the next part of what the Bible says. I, I remember hearing, uh, I think it was Michael Medved say this on the radio many years ago, that it's not just let my people go, but let my people go so they can serve me on this mountain. That the opportunity and the joy, serve the Lord with joy, as it says in Psalm 100, that joy is the greatest reward in itself that we enjoy here in this world the joy of being servants of God with humility and compassion. Have a good Shabbos. Please like, share, and subscribe.